All right, we're in Joshua chapter 2. It's the second uh, second lesson in the book. Uh, if you hadn't got a book, Brother Myron will get you one. Uh, we are in a new book. And I'm going to read from uh, the scripture in here is missing some verses uh, just because of uh, the space sake, I reckon, inside of this book here. Um, it didn't have as much space, but it starts in Joshua chapter 2, verse 3. And then goes to verse 9 and transitions to verse 15 and then finishes out the chapter in verse 24. But I'm going to go ahead and read uh, the whole chapter. Uh, if you could and would please stand with me. And I'll just read a couple verses and then have you sit down. And then uh, just unless you want to remain standing, that's fine uh, for time for, for your legs sake. And this is 24 verses we're going to read to get this whole story in, okay? Uh, so Joshua, lesson number two in the book, Rahab and the Spies. Rahab was a harlot, amen, and God used her. And we're going to get into all that. Uh, Joshua chapter 2, starting verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land in Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. That is means a prostitute. Yeah. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they, are, for they be to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said thus, They are come men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went, I will not. Pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them in the stalks of flax, which she laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after the way of Jordan to the forge. And as soon as they were pursued after them, were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land that your terror is fallen on upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Oji, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did I there remain any more courage in man because of you, for the Lord your God he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. You can go ahead and be seated. I now continue to read. Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord since I have shewed you kindness that you will also shew me kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token and they will save alive my father, my mother, my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. Let me stop right there and catch you up. So... They're at Jordan. They have not crossed over. Joshua, God told Joshua that he was going to take all the land. But he sent two spies in. They have come to Rahab, the harlot's house. The king got word that these two boys were in their city. And he has sent his men to her to say, where are they at? And she lied and said that they were not there and that they went out and you must go get them. And now she's telling these men, she's saying... Please save me. I know you are coming to destroy. You are going to take. The Lord hath given you uh, this land. We know that. And people faint because of you. Uh, but please uh, save me and my family. Verse 14, And the men answered her, Our lives for your lives, if you utter not our business. And it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. She's now telling, uh, the spies is now telling her that if you don't tell anybody, uh, we're, not, uh, we're not going to destroy you or your household, okay? 15, then she let down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. This harlot's house is against the city wall. And she said unto them, Get ye into the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward be ye go your way. Now she's told these men that she was hiding in her roof, after the messengers had left to go pursue them out of the city, uh, they were actually hiding in the rooftop, and she's now went and got them and told them, look, go pursue, go get into the mountains, stay there for three days. Uh, some believe it might be been there for three days, or this whole situation took three days, but now the Ray had the heart and said, they're gone, I've sent them out, 
Save me in my household. You go hide in the mountains. They'll come back. Didn't find you. Then you can go home. That's kind of the same tactic they took in Ai, uh, God's people. And, and that's another story. Uh, 17, And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou did lay us down. And thou shalt bring thy father, thy mother, thy brethren, and all thy father's household come unto thee. So now they said, when we come back to destroy Jericho, lay this thread outside of your window. Therefore, we'll know not to touch or kill or take anything from your household, and we'll leave everybody alone. But he said, but they say too that if anybody comes out, we'll destroy them. So they had to stay inside the house, and they would know it was Harlot's house. Josh was going to let the boys know that this thread, you leave that house alone. 18, uh, where there's the blood, amen, where the blood applies, he'll die, amen. Praise God. 18, behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou did let us down by. Thou shalt bring thy father, thy mother, thy brother, and thy household home unto thee. 19, and it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house and street, his blood shall be upon his head and will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in thy house, his blood shall be on our head, if any man be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. said, but... Now they're saying, but if you if you go against what we have this order that you and I have made together, if you go against it, then we're just we'll we'll, we'll uh, they're going to back out and they'll destroy, kill her and family as well. Them keep the oath, amen. And she said, according unto your word, so be it. And she went uh, sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window, and they went and came into the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were re- until the re- pursuers were returned. That was the king's messengers that came looking for Joshua's spies, and the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain, and praise God, uh, and, uh, and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told him all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into your hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint. Because of us. I just seen something else there that's amen. interesting. Uh, amen. Praise the Lord. Right, so before we get into the questions, uh, I'm going to jump you over to Exodus chapter 15 for some related scripture. Exodus chapter 15, 13 through 18. This is just a reminder. Thou in thy mercy had led forth thy people. This is the promise of God. Which thou hast redeemed, thou hast guided them in the strength into the holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid, like this king was. Sorrow shall take hold on the heaven to the uh, Palestinia, just like she said, this Gentile woman, uh, this, this harlot Rahab. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed, the mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take a hold upon thee, and the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. And by the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as a stone till the Lord, till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over, which thou hast purchased. Amen. 17 uh, of Exodus 15, Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance in the place, uh, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. When God establishes something, it remains. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. So there's the promise, the same promise that was given to, given to Moses and given to Joshua. And remember, just last, just last week, uh, we was told that he told them, every place that you step is yours. I'm going to make a point with that here with what went on with Rahab and the spies. This did not have to go on. This did not have to happen. But thank God it did for Rahab's sake, amen, and for the Gentile sake, praise God. Uh, number two is related scripture. We find it in the New Testament over in the book of Hebrews. Uh, it's been told that Apostle Paul uh, wrote this book. We don't know the author of it, but most people say it's Apostle Paul, but I say it was God because it's all inspired. Amen. Praise God. Uh, so Hebrews chapter 11 verse 31 says, by faith, let's, let's jump up. Uh, 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. That's something to state. That is something to document. That's something to, for God to put in his book. That's wonderful. I mean, Moses, the Red Sea parted as by dry land, and they walked across it on dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Now watch this. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after there were 
compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, but she had received the spies with peace. She's named for receiving some spies and not telling. That was her faith. Though Moses' faith could split the sea. To God, there's no difference in faith. Amen. God's been staring my heart in that lately. Uh, 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 number three, James chapter 2, verse 25. Uh, James chapter 2, we also see, uh, it's the book right after Hebrews, if I can find it myself. Uh, she's mentioned again. Goes to show you the, uh, how much God loves sinners, praise God. This woman was a harlot. She was a prostitute. She got right with God. James 2.25 says, Likewise, let's jump up uh, in 23, because I know I'm going to do it for a reason. Look, 23 says, And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. So we've gotten here uh, uh, where he's talking about Abraham, but over back in, in Hebrews, what we know to be the hall of faith, there's only two women there's only two women that are uh, talked about there, and it's Abraham, the, the, the partridge, the, the, the father of the faith, his wife, and then a harlot. Well, what contrast there is between the two? What difference there is between the two? But not in the sight of God. Not when you trust him out of faith. Not when you're trusting Christ. You don't see that. He's the blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. But look, number 24. Ye then see how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Your faith produces works. Amen. Works don't produce faith. Amen. It produces rewards of yourself. But if you have faith, then it will produce works that produces rewards in heaven. Now 25, likewise also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Amen. So here we got Rahab and the spies. Again, last week we seen, uh, we seen where we can experience God's blessings if we obey God. Now it's put in action. It's put in action. Uh, these two boys, these two spies, Joshua has sent them over uh, to view out the land that God already told them that he was going to get. He did not have to do this. He already had the land. If he had just sent his men in there, they were going to get it anyway. Oh, but I'm sure uh, Rahab was happy about it. See, the, she said that their hearts melted. She already knew. If you notice in verse 9, it says, And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. Uh, she knew there was something different about this millions of people out in the wilderness and they're just taking over everywhere they go. And, and, and Joshua was trying to be ahead of God and spy out the land, and God had already given it to him. But because of that, remember last week we talked about too over in Deuteronomy where he says, I'm out before you. He said, I'll go with thee. I'll walk with thee. He said, I'm out in front of thee. He already knew this was going to take place and Joshua got a little, I guess, maybe doubtful um, or maybe just trying to be a little proactive. Um, and when we do them things, we're, we're, we're getting out of the way of letting God just take care of things. But because of that, this woman got saved. She was a Gentile woman. She got saved. And her family got saved. What if Joshua didn't do this? Rahab would have died. She'd have died of heart and went to hell. But instead, she got, and, and, and look at, there's a, there's a bigger picture I can't dig into. We ain't got enough time, but we could about the Jew and the Gentile. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But he gave he them power, as much as he received him, gave he them power to become the sons of God. She called him Lord, and she was a Gentile. And she's talked about in the Bible, throughout the Bible, uh, because of what she did, Amen. Uh, and we're going to get into all that, amen. But God has solutions for us before we even ask Him. God has solutions for us before we even ask Him. Because this happened, He didn't only protect, watch it, uh, He didn't only protect her and her family, but He also protected these two spies that Joshua put in danger. Joshua put them in danger going out there. And God protected them both, and He used it to come together. God works in mysterious ways. There's people, there's some people to say, well, I don't exactly like that, don't, don't care for that because God works in the compound of this book. He does. And this book's mysterious. Yeah. I've read it through and through. This book is mysterious. God is mysterious. Amen. I stay and preach and teach in the confounds of Genesis to Revelation, but there's just some things about God I'm still trying to figure out. Amen. And that's what they were doing here. Amen. 
Uh, but we can rejoice over God's uh, blessings even in the midst of our trying times. They're having these, they're, they're doing good. Joshua uh, and Moses has passed away. They're doing well. Things are going good. But there's challenges that come up. And we can rejoice in these trying times. These spies got to rejoice. They come back and told Joshua about it all. And they got to rejoice in the fact that God protected them. I, I'm telling you, and, and it... And, and, Things ain't always exactly what we think they ought to be. I've learned that the hard way. Things are not always the way we think they ought to be in our Christian walk. Like, and I'll say it all the time. It ain't pancakes, fluff, fluff, rainbow, smell good. Uh, it's, not, it's not like it. Everything perfect, happy, go lucky for a Christian. It's not. It actually kind of gets a little worse. Amen. You're being attacked by the devil, and he'll use all his little minions to, to attack you in, in your life, in your ministry. And, and, but just hang on in there because God has a plan like he did for these spies and for Rahab, uh, amen. So again, uh, Joshua chapter 2 is what we're running through uh, in, in the blessings of it. I wrote here, uh, uh, God gives us opportunities. We must act out of faith. It's just thoughts I wrote down on the book here. He will not only uh, lead God and be out in front of us uh, there to protect us, but to also fulfill His purposes and His promises. I don't know how God does that. That's what I'm talking about being mysterious. God... He, he fulfills what he says he's going to and his purposes and his promises while, while fixing our messes that we make all the while through it all. How else does God uh, uh, portray uh, through people's lives and their actions the word of God and how it relates spiritually and emotionally and literally to our lives like David and, and the Goliath and, and he taken the stones and threw them and he, and he killed them and, and, uh, and he had victory. And we can compare that to our lives when we have these problems right in front of us. If we'll just trust the Lord, no matter how big the problem is, we got victory through Christ. Uh, these, these things is just that way. Uh, God's awesome that way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, in all reality, uh, none of this had to happen. I've already mentioned that. Joshua just uh, went for it, and God uh, done gave the land. Uh, but God used this to save the Gentile family. I had that written down there as well. just want to make sure I give it to you. Uh, as far as questions go, we'll go question number one. What did Joshua do to determine what the initial challenge in Canaan would be? We've already talked about it. Uh, the two spies. He sent in the two spies. God then told him he, every place his foot would go, he would take that land. He did not have to do that. He put these two spies in danger. Uh, they, got, they got caught like they did. The same thing happened with Moses. Remember that? Uh, but it was Joshua and Caleb come back and said they could and all the other ones. That was more than two, but... Uh, but the fact of the matter is, we can take God at His promises. It, don't, don't, don't take, uh, I, I don't want to touch no buttons or anything, but your own revelations and things, don't take them at their word. Uh, I've had dreams and, and visions and things like that. I don't quite understand uh, in things, but can I tell you, friend, that if it's in the book, we can bank on it. You can't always bank on what you see and what you hear and these things, well, we're human, these things happen. But can I tell you, friend, that if it's in this book and God has promised it, you can bank on it. Amen. Uh, you can bank on it. Amen. Uh, if God says it. He promises it. Amen. Joshua got out in front of him and sent out two spies to spy the land and didn't have to, but because he did, the Gentile, uh, this Gentile family got saved. Amen. Uh, question two says, Why is it not surprising uh, that the king hurried to find the spies? We see that. In verses 2 and two, 3, and says, And the king Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered thine house, for they be come to search out all uh, the country. There was great fear in Jericho because of Israel. Wouldn't you be? Uh, it, there's millions, if there's millions of people, uh, millions of them uh, uh, coming to your, if you had, like they had back then, walled cities and things, and everywhere they go, they've done defeated other kings and and took lands and destroyed it and took spoil and doing these things and they know God's on their side, wouldn't you be scared? Amen. Uh, that was kind of like, I'll put it this way, there was a militia some years back. It was uh, a militia that came down there uh, downtown. And uh, I, I ain't going to lie to you, I got a bit fearful about it. I said, what in the world are they coming here for? You know, you all of a sudden you, they put, put it on news and social media and all that stuff. And I mean, there's, there's thousands of them and and they're coming marching with guns and masks on and not identifying themselves and, 
You know, and, and, and I got a little fearful about it. And I told my wife, I'm going to go down there and street preach. That's how, that's how I'm going to handle what I'm feeling inside, right? And uh, we did wind up going down there, amen, and things didn't go very, things didn't go very well uh, on my part. Um, but God did protect, amen. God, God does these things. Uh, so when, when, things, when things get rough, this king, and, and there was danger, we, we get as humans, we, we want to know why. What's going on? And that's what that king did, rightfully so. If I was a king of a nation, and there's, there's, a, there's a nation coming that's just destroying everybody in their path, more importantly, we know got God on their side, you're going to be fearful. And that's why this king uh, sent these spies, because there was fear amongst the people that God was with them. And can I tell you, friends, same for you and I. If we got God with us, no weapon formed against these shall prosper. It just will not. They're going to cry, and they're going to cry, and they're going to cry but no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. When we stand for God, he stands for us. I just crossed my mind, Stephen. We see Stephen, he stood up for God. That man was a preaching over in the, in the book of Acts. And, then, and they stoned the man. And the Bible says that he looked up and he could see Jesus Christ stood off his throne, gave him a standing ovation. He stood up and while Stephen sitting there getting stoned and said the same thing Christ did at the cross. Father, forgive them. Amen. When you have God with you, there's fear amongst the people. And rightfully so, it ought to be. If you and I will walk close to God, uh, there's no big eyes and there's no little use in this thing. If you'll read that book, if you get born again, and you read this book and you pray and you seek God's face, friend, Jesus walks with you. Yes. And people know when Jesus is walking with you. Amen. 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 Uh, question number three says, What did Rahab tell the king's messengers and how much of it was the truth? We see that in verses 4 or 5. It said, The woman took the two men in that this king has told, uh, he said, I, I know two spies has come. And uh, he, he sent his messengers to her at Rahab, the heart of the house. And it says, And the woman took the men and hid them. So she hid the two spies, Joshua's spies. Uh, good to see you, Stephen. And took them spies and sent them up inside the, in, in her rooftop. And then this is what she said in verse 4. And said thus, There came men unto me but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate when it was dark that the men went out, whether the men went, I will not pursue after them quickly, for you shall overtake them. The only truth that she told was that these men came. And then she lied. She did. Everything she said, I don't know where they're from. Yes, yeah, she did. I don't know where they went. Yeah, you did. You got them, had them up in your rooftop. Then she told them, go pursue after them. Now she's setting these men up for failure. I thank God she did for these spy sakes. Uh, so I won't say this here. So everything she said was a lie outside the fact that they came. So she protected herself that way. Uh, God does not promote lying. He don't. He says no liar shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Uh, we find that over in the, in the book of Revelation. Uh, but can I tell I won't say this, that the Bible states things sometimes, but doesn't mean we, we have to do that. God states facts in the Word of God. Amen. And that's what happened here. Uh, so it states, uh, it states facts without giving a stamp of approval. Right. We know she lied, but we don't have to lie. But can I say this too? She put her faith in God. And because she put her faith in God, God blessed her. And God is, I'll say this too, God is a lot more uh, uh, subtle with, uh, with babes in Christ than we can. Amen. Well, what'd you just say? I know you're lying. I know you're doing wrong. I know you know what I'm saying. But God, ain't you glad God don't look at us that way? Because at one time we were like that too. Young in Christ, still mess up, still do wrong. This is a sanctification as a process. We're getting uh, better over time. God's working on me every day. I'm better today than I was yesterday. And I'm going to strive to be better tomorrow than I am today. That's sanctification. It's a process. Amen. Uh, so, uh, so here, Rahab, everything she said was a lie outside the fact that she knew, but God used that to protect them spies and that God uses some things. I'm telling you, uh, the, there we find time with Elijah. Elijah was fasting for 40 days and uh, God used the fowls of the earth. These same fowls that came down and uh, tried to stop Abraham in the book of Genesis uh, from his prayers reaching God and his sacrifice uh, used them same, them same fowls, I don't know if we literally the same ones, to feed Elijah when he was fasting about the Passover. God will use anything. He's God. Yeah. He's in control. Can I tell you, God uses lost people. Amen. God uses safe people. 
There's people that are lost that can wind up in, wind up in a hospital or, or something go wrong and, and God's people get to praying. That's why it's so important for us to have the prayer list. Because intercessory prayer. Amen. God will use us to help them. But can I tell you, there have been times, that, that, I'll, I'll put it this way, I'm about to pass out street preaching one time. I'm hot. I'm about to pass out. Lord, I'm thirsty. I'm telling you, it is a matter of 45 seconds later, somebody's throwing a water bottle at me, trying to hit me in my head. That water bottle, whoa, like that. But thank God, amen. He didn't hit me. And I went and picked up that water bottle, hadn't been cracked open. I cracked that thing open, chucked it, got my bottle of water. That guy was wrong. He's a sinner. Praise God. And he was trying to hurt me. But I got me some water. Amen. God, God does that. God can use anything. And that's what he did here. Amen. Uh, question number four says, what made it possible for Rahab to hide the spies? So now she's hit them. She's told these men a bunch of lies. And uh, God used it. Uh, we don't put our stamp of approval online. We shouldn't lie, amen. Um, but it says now, how did she hide them? It says, verse 6, but she brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof. So this flax, it was flax harvest season. What flax is is something that they use to make cloth and materials. And uh, when they got it, when they harvested, it was soaked in water for weeks and sometimes a month at a time. And the only way to really, the best way to dry it out was for them to put it on their rooftop. Hey, man, ain't that right, Brother Brian? You'll sweat up there on them roofs. It's a good place to draw some heat. And they put them things down there on them, laid them uh, flax out there to dry out. And because she had so much of it, it was easy, and I'm sure it wasn't exactly level. It was probably over, all over the place. And because it was flax harvest time uh, in the city, they didn't think to look at the roof and see two big humps in it. They just probably thought it was more piles of flax right there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so they didn't see these men. So that's how she was able uh, to hide these men in her rooftop. Amen. I tell you, God used anything. Praise God. He used a lot of things. Question five says, what did Rahab... Uh, tell the spy, or what did Rahab tell the spies uh, that she personally believed? We find it in verse 9. I've already mentioned it. Uh, she calls him Lord. And look what she says. What these spies should have already known, which they might have, I don't know. And Joshua has already heard. She says, And the land that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. And if we backed up, she has said that the Lord has given you the land. And these people are terrified because of you. Their hearts faint because of you. Because God is with you and your people. Amen. Uh, I want to point this out. Uh, I wrote this down. I see it this morning. It's more to make you laugh. But verse 8 says, And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. So after she sent these king's messengers away, and now she's going back up there to get them spies and tell them these men are gone. You need to go out to the mountains for a few days. I wrote this down. Proverbs 21, 9 says, It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a white house. <laughs> Lord of God. You imagine this woman, she goes, you, Honey, get off that roof. She's going to climb the ladder and get up there with you. But it says it's better to be on the rooftop than in a house with a brawling woman. It, it's right there. Amen. It's in the Bible. Praise God. Amen. You can, you can laugh. It's funny. All right, amen. So she said, she told the men, I know the Lord hath given you the land and your terror is falling upon us and the inhabitants of the land uh, faint because of you. Amen. Uh, question number six is, how did Rahab describe the attitudes present throughout Jericho? We just read it. Uh, they're terrorized by their presence. Uh, again, it's the same thing. If God be for us, who can be against us? When you walk close to God, He walks with you. I've learned if you'll read the book of Proverbs and you just continue to read that thing over and over, you almost just learn to keep your mouth shut. But leave, keep your, do what you do for God. Pray, read your Bible, do the things God tells you to do. Keep your mouth shut in the presence of God right there with you. And people cannot deny it. Amen. They, they just can't. That's just the way it is. Amen. Uh, so she said she knew that the attitude of the town and, and the word in the city was that God was with these people and they were fainted and they were terrorized by that. I've I, I, I just met a guy the other day. I, I seen a, a yesterday at a yard sale, and uh, there was a deer on the a deer on the uh, for sale that they had shot and had a, you know you put on the wall. And I thought about a joke that I know that uses the Lord and gets a message out. 
So, and my wife said, I don't want to stomp at that one. I said, well, I do. And I put it in park, and I looked at everything real quick, and I started telling the guy this joke why, with this, using this deer, right? And uh, lo and behold, when I got done, he said, yeah, it was, about a, it was about a couple of deacons and a preacher. And I asked the guy if he knew what a deacon was before I told him, he don't know me from nothing, I don't know him. And when he got done, he said, yeah. He said, yeah, I know what deacons are. And he said, I know what preachers are too. He said, I know Sonny Mo. He said, and his son went to, to school at Bethel. God can use some things, my friends. He, he really can. You never know when God's doing something. Uh, but there were, when I was telling him this joke, I just felt like the guy couldn't stay still. Like there was a type of terror. There was a type of, uh, there's something different about this fellow. There's something peculiar about it. There's a, and, and little I didn't know, he knew Brother Sonny. He'd seen the van, Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, you know, and there was some unsettledness there. Uh, praise God, but God used it, amen. Uh, so these people, this city, knew that God's people, this, can you imagine, millions of people in the wilderness, and everywhere they go, they're winning. And they're taking over cities and kings. And uh, we read all that last week, amen. So there was terror amongst the people, amen. Uh, we don't use that for a bad thing. But can I tell you, day and time you're living in, it's a good thing. I want before, before I want anything of this world, before I want fame and fortune of this world and of people, I want God on my side. If I'm just somebody that people knows walks with God, leave me alone. Leave me alone. God will take care of everything else. And that's how we need to live life. Amen. Praise God. Uh, but it does help to have God on your side. Amen. Uh, seven says, How did Rahab help the spies get out of the city? We've uh, skipped a bunch of uh, verses here. But 15, it says, Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. So the, what I envision is that her the walls of the house is set up, right, of the city. Say the walls is like his of the city, but maybe there's a window inside that wall, and her house is built up against that wall. I don't know if houses were built up against that wall for space sake, but then she let them out through a cord in the wall, in the city, out of the city, and she let them down through a cord so that they could escape, amen, uh, out of Jericho. So that's how she let them out. And because she did this, her whole family got saved. She helped these men be saved from this wrath. Because she did that, her and her family is getting saved uh, from that. Can I tell you, it works the same way with you and I. If we'll get out here and witness to people and tell them about the goodness of God and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, them, them children that we're worried about and them grandchildren that we're worried about and them, and them nieces and them nephews and them neighbors, God will start saving people. If you'll be busy, I promise you, if you'll be busy about God's Word and not faint in trying times like this, trust the Word of God and keep on going for Jesus, them people that you're constantly praying for, that you think there's no hope for, that they uh, sometimes we even get out of the way, man, that bad, they got to be rapid, man, you know? Uh, not always the case. If you'll just keep on being faithful, God can bless and God will save. Because she helped God's men, then she was a Gentile, she got saved, she was a harlot, and her family, her mom, her dad, her brothers, and her sisters is what the Bible says. They all got to say in the book of Acts, thou shalt be saved, and thy household. Amen. God can't lie. All right, uh, that was question number uh, seven. They let them through the window. Verse Question eight says, what did Rahab advise them to do? Now in verse 16, she's telling them, now I've let you through the window. In 16 she says, and she said unto them, get you to the mountain. Now God's using her to give them instructions. Get them into the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. So now she said, I'm going to let you down through this one, you go through this one, go to the mountains. They're already out there looking for you. After three days, they'll come back. They might have had a certain amount of time. They looked for people they knew it was too late. They'd come back, and she knew this. And then she said, then go home, and they won't be able to find you. That was faith on the spies' hands, too. That this woman did hide them, and she's telling them what to do. So it took some faith on their part to listen to Rahab. Can I tell you, God will put words in people's mouths. I've met people, I know they're lost. It's obvious, therefore known by the fruit, and, or tell you they're not saved. But God will put words in their mouth of exactly what needed to hear, uh, what needed to be said in that moment. God will do that. God uh, is in control. Amen. And can I tell you, too, these boys got out of here in the mountains, and they're listening to this Gentile harlot. And, and can I tell you, that our problems that arise and the things that come up in our life ain't always on our timing. It's not, it's not when we think things ought to be. It may not be exactly when we think they ought to be. Them boys, you remember them in the, probably biting their fingernails, walking back and forth and 
Are we really supposed to be doing this? Are we really supposed to be waiting that long? Sometimes we go through the fires of life and the troubles of life and the problems of life. They might be physical, they might be spiritual, they might be emotional, they might be financial, they might be health. We go through problems and sometimes we go through them a little longer than we think God ought to let us to. But God's timing is always perfect. We just got to trust Him through the fires of life. Amen. Uh, uh, question number nine says, When the spies returned, what did they tell Joshua? We see it in 23. Now they're safe. They went to the mountains. They are safe. They've made it. 23 says, So the two men returned back, back, uh, back to Israel and descended uh, from his people and Joshua and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. So what all did he tell them? About them being led to uh, Rahab Harlot's house by her hiding them in the flax, uh, by lowering them through the window, also giving them guidance and what to do to stay safe, to make it back home. Uh, and praise the Lord. And they stay on the mountain. Uh, they, so to answer the question, what did they tell Joshua? Everything. <laughs> Everything. I've heard a song. Uh, I'm going to tell... There's somebody... I'm going to tell God how you treated me or something like that. Or some, kind, some I don't know if it's a gospel song or not, but it's coming to mind. Amen. Uh, I know I've heard it through the years. Uh, I'm going to tell God exactly how you treated me. Amen. And, and can I say this? Uh, this is another verse I wrote down. Proverbs 27, 2 says, So the spies got back and told Joshua everything about Rahab. And they, he took these spies' words for it so much that Rahab survived and her family. They didn't get killed. Amen. Uh, everybody and everything else did. And they took, Joshua took their words for it. Watch it. Proverbs 27, 2 says, Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. There's plenty of, uh, we don't need the praises of men, we need the praise of God. And when the time is due, uh, those things will happen. And I believe that's exactly what happened here. I, after this happened, can you imagine what kind of prized possession Rahab felt like? When it was all said and done and they invited her into the people and, and, and she no longer had to be a harlot and sell her body and do ungodly things and I'm sure they gave her everything she needed and her family, a home and, and they were going to divide the land and when they got homes, Rahab got one too and, 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 and had food to eat and had people that loved her and respected her. Can I tell you, it's the same way when we get saved and we get invited to the family of God. I don't care if you was a drug addict, a drug dealer, if you was a, if you was a, a, a harlot or a man that sold them. Uh, and you get saved, born again, you'll trust Christ. You're invited and to the family of God. Amen. And, and we're treated the same. There's one, one family, uh, there's one, one gospel, uh, there's one baptism, one faith, and one Lord. Uh, amen. Uh, so he went back and told them all, everything, everything that happened about this Rahab the harlot. I'm sure Joshua was excited uh, uh, to meet uh, her. Amen. It's kind of like me and Jesus, my advocate uh, I'm ready to meet God the Father, amen. I've met the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart. I'm looking forward to seeing His face and seeing how everything's going to work together, amen. Uh, lastly, question 10, we're running out of time. What conclusions about moving ahead did they share uh, with Jesus? What conclusions about moving ahead did they share with Jesus or with Joshua? Truly, amen, good to see you folks. Truly, the Lord had delivered all the land. We see that in the last verse, 24, and they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord had delivered into your hands all the land. So see, they went through all this just to verify what God had already said. See, these two, these two spies were sent in when they didn't have to be. God then told Joshua was getting land. But because of that, Rahab the harlot, this prostitute, she got saved and her family got saved because of it, just to get to the same, uh, to get to the same point uh, that God keeps His promises. It's the same with you and I. It's a big old circle. The gospel is real simple. You know, Jesus' ministry was a circle. If you map it out, and it was only a hundred mile radius. If you start right here, His ministry was a hundred mile radius like this, and and He's reached the whole entire world. Amen. The gospel is so simple. We sin before a holy God. We deserve hell. Well, if Adam didn't do it, you would have. Jesus entered into the world, born of a virgin, a miracle birth. And he died on a cross, tempted and tried in all ways, such as you and I are, yet without sin. 
which made him perfect, died on a cross, laid in a tomb, rose on the third day. As it is written, death is swallowed up in victory because of Jesus Christ. And if you believe in your heart, call upon him, Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. That, that is a repentant heart that is tired of the things of this world and turns towards God. That's how the gospel is. It's so simple. We repeat it over and over and over again. And you know why we do? Because people don't accept it the first time all the time. Joshua didn't accept the first time that God gave him the land. Though when he went in, him and Caleb, and told Moses, yes, we can take it. There were only two. Now he's at a point later on where he's sending two spies in instead of just having that same trust and that same faith. Can I tell you, you're up one day and you're down the next and you're walk with God. Uh, we don't have to be, but one day we're stronger and one day we're weaker. One day we, we might be strong for a week and weak, weak for a month. It's just how things happen. Stay in your Bible, stay reading, stay praying. Amen. There is a protection for God's people. If God be for us, who could be against us? Uh, we see where these, uh, these men obeyed uh, Joshua and they kept their trust and faith and Rahab obeyed uh, God and kept their trust and it all worked out that all of them was saved uh, from what was going on. It's saying, you know, we just got to trust Jesus Christ. We don't always know what's going on. We don't always know what our life is going to deal with us tomorrow. That's you and I's problem. I know my past. I know my future. Uh, and my eternal destination is in heaven. But you and I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, devastation can happen uh, before we get home today. We might get some bad news. Somebody passed away or we're sick or something happens. Uh, but the worst news to mankind is to die and not know if he was born again, not to be saved. It's nothing else. You can't add to and you can't take away. There are some people that say that you can't, uh, you can't be born again unless you was baptized and received uh, the Holy Ghost by speaking in tongues. Can I tell you, friend, that's wrong. That, that, that's hypocrisy. That, that, that is not true. The gospel is that Jesus died on a cross, laid in a tomb, and rose on the third day. And he says, For whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's what it takes. And I'm so happy about that. And you and I have got to tell people about that. And when it gets rough and when it gets tough, trust God, trust His timing, have courage uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ, and He's going to get us through our problems. Hey, He's already saved us. Do, do, do you see that? Where Joshua already had the land... And then he's going on. He's had this high spiritual time with God. He knows that he's getting the land. He knows everything's going to work out. Yet he found himself through the trials and fires of life with doubts and fears and worries and got ahead of God and sent people in, put other people in danger. But all the while, he was okay. He was what God said he would keep. God keeps his promises. I'm telling you, when we get born again, when we repent of sin, turn away from the world, trust Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, friend, can I tell you, you're going to fall on your face at some point in time. Things are not going to go exactly the way you need to, but we're already going to heaven. The Bible teaches we are sealed by the Holy Ghost of God. It's the earnest of our inheritance. It's the down payment. God does not lie. Amen. Jesus Christ, same yesterday, today, and forever. To, to next week will be in Lesson 3. I encourage you to read the book. Uh, amen. Be a devotional throughout the week, and we'll go over them questions uh, next week. Father, in Jesus' name, we humbly bow before you. And God, we thank you that you're on our side. Thank you, Lord God, that you protect your own. Father, I pray, Lord God, for each and every one of the sound of my voice, God, that they truly know you as Lord and Savior. Lord God, eternity is a long time to be wrong. I pray, bless the preacher this morning as he brings forth the message. And Lord, may you penetrate hearts. And may, Lord God, families be restored like Rahab the harlots. In Jesus' name, amen.